Hi, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Trying to discuss uh, some derivatives of inverse hyperbolic trig, but now look at some examples. Based on my earlier videos, I went over proving all of the derivatives for specific functions, let's say like inverse hyperbolic tan and inverse uh, cotangent of, uh, of x right here. But now I'm going to go over these two examples. And uh, the first one is basically y equals to uh, hyper inverse hyperbolic. Uh, tan of sine of x here. So you have a sine of x inside a hyperbolic, inverse hyperbolic function, and solving this is just very similar to any other um, method, of basically any other function. You're just going to have to use uh, the derivative that we already know of hyperbolic tan, um, inverse hyperbolic tan, and then apply the chain rule. Yeah, and now before solving this derivative, I will uh, first basically write down the derivative of well, dy over dx of uh, basically of inverse hyperbolic tan of x. Like I showed in my earlier video, this one is just going to be 1 over 1 minus x squared right here. You can see the video link below for the proof of this. So now we could use this inside this one right here. So if we have y is equal to yeah, of, uh, inverse hyperbolic tan of uh, sine of x, then we take the outer derivative first. So dy over dx is going to equal to this derivative of this one is it's going to be one minus one over one minus x squared. But now this x squared is replacing with the sine of x. So we'll have one over one minus. Now we have a sine of x right here, squared. And now we do uh, on this one right here using the chain rule. We have to find derivative of sine of x. And like I showed in my earlier video, the derivative of sine of x is just cosine of x right here. But now we could, uh, yeah, so you can stick with this answer if you're doing an exam or whatever, unless they ask to simplify. And you can simplify this further because if we recall the trig identity uh, sine squared plus cos squared, this is the same way as writing uh, this one right here with a bracket, the same thing as this, equals to 1 right here. So if we solve for 1 minus sine squared right there, we put this over the other side, we'll get cos x squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x right here. So then this one, we can plug that in. We're going to get, obviously here, we're going to get cos x over cos squared of x. So this will cancel. We'll be left with 1 over cos of x. Or in this case, we could apply the definition. So I'll just put this in a circle. I just do uh, put in the bubble right here to make it separate from there. And now this one will just equal 2 by definition secant of x. So there is the derivative of question one right here. So now question two, this one is the states y equals two inverse hyperbolic cotangent of square root x squared plus one. I just wrote this because it's uh, it's just tedious writing that in, in word. I'm using their equation editor. So basically this is the same thing as, yeah, same thing as this right here, in inverse hyperbolic cotangent of basically square root x squared plus one. So now we can do the same thing and uh, similar to what we did right here using chain rule, etc. And I'll have to do it actually a couple times. I'll go there, do that right now. Yeah, so for example, too, if I write this down right here, uh, before I get this, I just want to point out that the, that the derivative of inverse hyperbolic cotangent of x is just equal to, like I showed in my earlier videos, actually equal to the same thing for the inverse hyperbolic tan of a uh, tangent. Uh, or in other words, this would just equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. But uh, let, but then this one, in, in this case, although this is the exact same thing as uh, this one above, the domains are actually different. This one's a for a domain of uh, absolute value of x is greater than 1. You can see proof of this all in the video links below for that. And in this one here, the, the, uh, the uh, domain is actually, this one is less than 1. Absolute value of x is less than 1. So anyways, the same derivative, different domains. So now we could use that in solving this derivative. This would just be now dy. Yeah, dy over dx would equal to y prime. Obviously, that's just another way of writing the derivative. And then we plug this one. So we plug this this thing inside here. So we'll get a one over one minus. And now we have a uh, x squared plus one. And then obviously you're going to square this out. Square roots will cancel. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is square root x squared plus one. This one of first put in a little bubble that if you have absolute value of x right here, I mean I have square root x like this. This is just another way to write it. You could write it as 1 over 2 and then finding the derivative of this d over this one right here dx. We would basically bring down the 1 over 2 using the power rule. You see proof of this also in the video link below and we'll get 
x, then we're going to subtract by 1, so we'll have it as, uh, this is going to be negative 1 over 2. So we're subtracting by 1 or, or 2 over 2. And this is just equal to 1 over 2 square root of x. So we could uh, just write that down for this case. So 1 over 2 times square root of x, in, 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 except in this case our x is our x squared plus 1. This is one is just dealing with x, so we'll have it as x squared plus 1. And now we go chain rule again and find root of x squared, which is just multiplied by 2x right here. Okay, so now we get the derivative as y prime is equal to. Simplifying this out, we'll get, or just uh, the square root cancel the squared. We'll get 1 minus x squared plus 1. And then times it by 1 over, there's going to be a square root x squared plus 1. The 2's cancel, there's an x now, so I'll just multiply by this x here. And now this simplifies further, you could expand this out, we'll have it as 1 over 1 minus x squared minus 1, multiplying by the, that out. Then we'll have, uh, on this side, we'll have an x, and then an x squared plus 1. And as you see here, the 1's cancel. So yeah, so that these 1's will cancel, so we're going to get 1 over... Uh, negative x squared times it by again now x over square root x squared plus 1 and now the x's will cancel so we'll be left with our final answer negative uh, the x will cancel 1 over x times square root x squared plus 1 and there's our final answer for the derivative of uh, question 2 anyways that's all for today if you learn from these examples and yeah, anyways, uh, you can download these exact notes in the Dropbox link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.